Well, hello, damn it. We're going to be doing a uh, little tutorial here on battle damage, authentic battle damage. This actually comes to a uh, gentleman that uh, seems to be a pretty good guy as far as uh, folks on the internet go. Uh, I can't pronounce his uh, handle very well, but it ends with D-O-W. Anyway, he was uh, doing a little vid that I watched on you know, community painting and all that kind of stuff, and he said that Battle damaged and weathered figures look the best, but they're so damned hard to do. And I'm here to show you they're really not all that hard, uh, at least to do a basic job. So that's what we're going to do. So I have this horribly painted shield here from the Chaos uh, series. And uh, yes, I know it sucks. It's horribly painted. The highlights are really bad on it, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we just need to figure out how to uh, do the battle damage on it. So. Pay no attention. These aren't the droids you're looking for. We're going to need a few things. You're going to need a very light, in fact, your lightest silver and your darkest. You can even mix your darkest with black. Then you're going to need an undercoat color or a primer color. Now, in this case, we're going to use black, but you can really use almost anything that you want. If you have a really dark model, maybe a white primer is a good thing, or think of it as an undercoat. Uh, maybe a lighter or dark color of whatever is painted on there. In this case, we're going to be mixing black with a little bit of the base color and uh, go through and uh, get it done that way. All right, so we have to think, how is this thing going to be weathered? I got water on my brush. Hmm. Anyway, uh, you know, you got to have to think about that. So as guys stick the shield into the ground because you can't carry it everywhere, so the bottom is going to be weathered and really anywhere that there is a corner. On some shields, they have some cuts in it, or you can make cuts with your X-Acto knife to kind of accentuate things, uh, however you want to do it. Anyway, here we go. Going in with the black. Gonna mix it again with a little bit of the base color, sanguine red. Uh, again, P3, because, well, P3 is best. Anyway, uh, mix all this together, and we get a very, very dark, dark red. So it needs to be very close to black. You don't want this a shade of red. You want it black with a red tint to it. I'll try and hold this as close to the uh, camera as I can. We're going to start out by doing very fine feathering strokes on the bottom where you want this to be. Now, when you go in with this undercoat color, meaning the black, or whatever you're using for undercoat color, you want it to be a little bit bigger than you think the battle damage needs to be. That means it needs to be pretty thick. Okay, uh, I'm going to use some of my mixer here. If you haven't seen how to make this mixer, check the other video they have on how to thin your paints. You'll love that mixer. It's awesome. All right, so I'm going in here, and I'm basically, with a very thin coat of everything, uh, wherever I think there's going to be weathering or battle damage, I'm going in there and painting it uh, this undercoat color, Gans Black. It's a little bit of shine here from the, uh, the light. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see this. Anyway, uh, you want to have kind of sharp edges to it in some places. Other places you don't. You just need to mess around with the actual details of how you make the edges of this, meaning how the black transitions into your normal piece of however you like it. I usually like it sharper. You can do either. Just again, give it a shot, see what works for you. Uh, and again, this is supposed to represent swords and all manner of things hitting these shields. So you want the edge just like that to kind of come down to make a little point from the edge, excuse me, of, you know, the sword gets drawn across and these sort of things. So just uh, be a little bit random about it. Uh, kind of go here and there and everywhere. Now, when you do the side, don't hold it perpendicular, but kind of hold it almost flat towards the uh, towards your surface there. So you kind of get a wider uh, impression of the paint on the model. That's really going to help you out. Okay, very key right there to make it uh, large enough. Um, and here, I'm going to make a slash across it. Again, you don't need to start off real thin. I uh, need to start off kind of thick, but then you do need to try to sharpen the edges. And if anything connects to the end, yeah, you need to make sure it gets a little wider at the end. You make little scratches and splotches here and there. You can go as heavy as you want, as light as you want. Incidentally, if uh, the uh, little star figurine there was uh, not black, I would have also done the same thing on that. Do it all the way across on whatever you have. All right, so now we're coming in with our darkest uh, metallic silver. Uh, again, you can even mix this a little bit with uh, black if you want to. What we're going to do is we're going to put as much of this as we can anywhere we put the black. This is a simulate that whatever the shot was, or whatever it is, scraped all the way through the base coat and went into the metal below. All right. Um, 
different ways to do this um, as far as a feathering technique goes. But again, the basics are right here. Figure out which one works best for you. But you want to try and get that as close to the black as possible in most places. In other places, you just want to leave the black. Those are the uh, strikes that really didn't get all the metal. They just kind of got the primer. In some cases, you don't want any black at all. Those are those really deep strikes that gouged right in. So you want to be want to vary this. You want to be a little bit random. You don't want to all be the same. Um, you know, play around with it. See what works for you. Again, I'm just using a shield. I've painted like five times here, and I'm just practicing on it myself because I always need practice because <laughs> yeah, I'm a hack and I need the practice. But uh, uh, you know. Little, little bit of practice here and there. Never heard anybody, but it's a trial run to see how it is. As you can see here, I'm doing it on the uh, on the star as well, where I think there would be battle damage. I'm not getting really detailed with exactly where to go in all this, and every model is going to be different. Exactly how you do it and where you do it, and so on and so forth. Find out what works best for you uh, based on that model. But here's a basic technique. All right, going in with a very light silver. Save your real good stuff, your liquid muddle for, for a different project. Just a very light silver, even if you have to mix with a little white, perhaps, possibly. But anywhere where there's enough silver, you can get another lighter silver inside of it. Do that. When this dries, it's going to have a better effect. Um, but uh, anywhere that you can. That's, you're not going to be able to do it in too many places uh, unless you have a really sharp, thin brush. You just have to be careful about it. Don't go too crazy on this lighter color. Just a little bit here and there. It doesn't need to be everywhere. Uh, just get what you can as I take it off camera and I switch the figures around. So to show you something I didn't do. No, I'm just kidding. I actually did all this. Um, and guys, that's that's kind of it. I'm going to fumble around here quite a few times trying to get this up close and focus it because anybody who's done a, a thing before on YouTube knows that web cameras suck at focusing. It's so annoying. Uh, or if you set the focus to be a certain distance like I usually do, I never get the damn thing to focus in right. But anyway, when it does, which it probably won't very much, there you are, authentic battle damage. And all done in a space of about, well, 15 minutes on this one. Of course, I'm going kind of slow. Only takes about five minutes, guys, to do a good job on this. You can do it all over a model. It'll make uh, guys with armor look fantastic. All right? So as I try and focus it away, that's what it looks like from a distance. It's good stuff, guys. Give it a shot. Subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what else what it needs doing. I'll get right on it. You guys be cool. Take care.